Hello, this is McMulligan back again with more Dark Souls. Today we're going to finish up here in Sin's Fortress, collect what we need to collect, or at least some of the things that are in the bit easier to get to areas, and then fight the boss and move on to the uh, capital of the gods itself and Orlando. Now, we're going to just go around and collect some items real quick before going up ahead, and also you're probably going to see me fail at a few things a few times. No need to worry, I succeed eventually. So, man, there was a lot of, um, I guess a little bits in this game, in this game. Um, you actually see the Baller Knights again here, which is interesting. I only think, I think this, um, well, no, there's this one, and I think there's one or two others that we all see in this area, but they're like the only two. I guess some of them managed to make it this far. Actually, um, so, you know, actually, I'll wait for the item description. It'll pop up later in the video, but, um, these guys are fair, but, uh, Okay, what the what was that? Oh, now I remember. So, actually, a few a few notes of interest. Um, you know what? Probably getting you talking about D and D for a bit, unless something. Actually, I don't remember if there was an interesting item in here or not. Yep, flame stone plate ring. Um, this one does not really have any interesting description. I did. I think I read it here just now, but it's really not that interesting. I think it mentions that it was the like a yeah symbol of a true knight, so I do think it probably was like some type of symbol given to certain um, I guess knights. Hell, you know what? Actually, come to think of it, the uh, black knight's armor is like all about fire resistance and everything, and they were like, you know, some of Gwyn's best. He might have been given these to his knights as well, just to give them more of that fire immunity. I mean, they were at war with dragons after all. Speaking of dra uh, dragons, what's funny is, you know you know that unkillable dragon in 3? The one that'll fly off if you do enough damage to it? You know that we actually killed that thing in the D&D game? Like, actually killed it. It didn't fly away. No, it was dead. Reason for that being was our wizard, actually. The thing kind of has, like, fire resistance, but, you know, he burned through that, made it vulnerable, and then we kind of annihilated it after that. I mean, granted, it's a D&D &D game, and you aren't confined to, like, you know, the physics of a video game by doing it. It's like, you know, almost kind of like the real world. I mean, not really, but, you know, you can do kind of whatever you want to do within your own character's abilities and, you know, as an actual person would be able to. Um, so we annihilated that thing. I think what we did is we like literally like disabled its wings to where it couldn't fly off and it just started basically beating the ever living hell out of it. And then it died. And we got a bunch of dragon scales. Ah yes. I got parried. Cause I forgot this guy can literally parry you. I think at this point I literally pulled out the uh, pyromancies and started yeeting them at him. Uh, what I wouldn't give to have some of the Pyromancy's Devlon had. Like, seriously. You know, being able to basically summon a volcano is a pretty nice ability. Although, let's be fair, that man basically was a Vulcan volcano. Very angry to boot as well. But that's a whole another can of worms that I'm not going to crack open at the moment. Instead, we're gonna go collect some of the items up here. Now, what was actually in here? I think I was just checking for a yeah, divine blessing. Now there's, there I know there's the description on that one. An item that's very useful, but you do not really use very often, or at all. Like it's so useful and rare that you just are never gonna use it. The goddess of sunlight, Guinevere, daughter of the great lord of sunlight, Gwyn, is cherished by all. Uh, all as a symbol of bounty and fertility. So it was made by Guinevere. All well, they were made by her. Ring of South Crisis. The mystical ring was created in the sacrificial rite of Velka, the goddess of sin. The magna shaded ring is especially rare. The rare loses nothing upon death and will be freed from any curse whatsoever, but the ring itself breaks. So yeah, that is... Um, so we got that interesting item, one from uh, Guinevere. Because she was very much like this healing kind of sun go goddess, and she would just create these like divine blessings, quite literally, as we say there. Um, 
Whereas we also got an item from another god, which we could have found a few of those earlier in the game. Um, there's actually one in the starting area that you can get, but you have to jump to get to it, and I don't like doing that. So, um... Basically, from that god Velka, you know, goddess of sins, it kind of reflects that... That item kind of reflects that god and who created it. Because they essentially created it for their followers to be able to keep doing all they're doing. You know, raging all their chaos and sin without losing anything in the, in the process, only gaining. Granted, it, it is a fickle thing, and as time and as Velika, I'm pretty sure likes to do, she likes to screw over her own followers because then they'll think, oh, I can just keep. They're just going to keep going for it because they get addicted to doing all that sin, and then, well. Turns out, we only got a certain amount of rings, so they end up dying and losing everything. But such is the case with Dark Souls in a nutshell. If it's not humans fucking up the world, it's the gods. You can also see that giant over there just like messing with the boulders. That's the one, by the way, that was like throwing him into that area, into the uh, earlier area of Sin's Fortress. He's right above that little room that, um, well, that you uh, can flip that switch to go it, it put it in the three different directions to have the boulders start rolling. You probably are also noticing that we're having a more explosive boulders being thrown at us. That is another giant doing that, and you also get to see me completely fail this jump. But on the bright side, we managed to get this item. I was contemplating what. Yep. Got the backstab. Yeah, not very difficult to kill at all. I think it's basically the same level as the Bowler Knights down in the um, other area. I know some enemies get buffed that are like the same kind of enemy. Like, even with the same model, they get buffed a little bit depending on the area you're in. I think the Bowler Knights do not. Hmm. Second try. Spoiler alert, I don't make it. Third time's a charm, I guess. But anyway. Yeah. All that stuff aside, we actually, um, in the uh, old D&D game, we actually dealt with a lot of, like, some of the giants that were around. Um, well, a few giants. We actually made friends with the one that's above the tower in 3, where you can go, I hope, any time. And you'll see that when I play through 3. Um, but we also had some other dealings with giants. We've actually had a bit more of a dealing with them in the recent reboot of the game. Um, well, if guy's talking right now, I'll be quiet. Yeah, went ahead and bought the great sword off the guy. It's a weapon I think I might end up using later down later on because I actually really like its move set and it's not as slow as the other ultra great swords. Like, I would take it any day over the Zweihander because the Zweihander is just way too f way too slow. Like for the amount of damage it does, it's way too slow. But I guess some people like its reach, but uh, honestly, I don't even think the reach is really worth it. At that point, if you want a reach weapon, just use a polearm. A lot faster and a lot more effective. Yeah, I'm reading over the descriptions of the uh, undead veterans of Lodren, but their journey was not as they went hollow and became a threat to all undead. Yeah. So as you can see, a few from those descriptions, um, a few different armies um, ended up coming through at like through the kingdom of Lord and to try to reach the capital to uh, basically fix the first flame. To no avail, all of them completely failed, and um, 
ended up dying as a result. That's why, like, it looks like a battlefield in, like, the start... The, well, I guess, I can't really see starting area. The area outside the tutorial, you know, the Undead Burg, where you're, like, fighting all the hollow soldiers and all that. Yeah, you can definitely tell that there was a war that went on there, and that was a battlefield at one point. Kind of the first front of the battlefield. The Boulder Knights made it past, as you can see, because they're all over the place in that uh, cathedral. Sir, you underestimate my power. Very much underestimate my power, but you know, th this game has no shortage of assholes, and he's just an added count on that list. I swear, if I had a nickel for every asshole I met in this game, I think I'd have like maybe like nine nickels, I don't know. There's not that many NPCs, actually. But you know, dying dead world in the middle of the apocalypse where the world is literally trying to kill itself. Well, is killing itself because, you know, Gwyn basically fucked up way back when and decided to tie everything to the flame and the flame's dying and he's like, no, we must keep this era going even though it's pointless and everything's gonna die anyway, but you know, everyone listen to the God King, I guess. He was literally going insane and went insane and, you know, all of that. Our plus adventure became fatigued during an importunate attempt to overcome the fortress, the serpent men, oh. That one went by too fast before I could read it. Probably should have paused further there. But you know what? I know what was on there. Uh, that was actually part of the thing I was talking about earlier with it stating the uh, serpent men were essentially kidnapping people and locking them up in cages that they would find going through the fortress, just basically waiting them out until they hollow, and I guess throwing them back out to the outside afterwards. Kind of messed up, but that's what they do. I'm not sure what the origin of these serpent men are. Um, I think it might be, um, I want to say it might be Velka that, like, cursed them, but I think it might, but it could also be, it also could have been one of Seep's experiments knowing this game, because he did a lot of magical experiments, made a lot of weird abominations, and we'll actually come to that when we go and fight Seep. Granted, that's not going to be for some time at this point. Well, I guess it's not too far in the future. I mean, we are almost to the second half of the game. We just need to get the Lord Vessel. That being said, there's a shortcut in one of these cages that we can use to get down that'll actually help us uh, free another friend. Very useful friend. Well, depending on if you're doing sorceries or not, but still someone we want to free and talk to because, you know, he's not an asshole. And when you're not an asshole in this game, you're okay in my book. At least for the most part. Still want to kill that asshole that killed the firekeeper, though, but you know. Uh, what do you, oh, you know what? This is where I got munched on on the head. You're about to see me get munched on. Also, I'm still confused as to where the other serpent man went, because there was one that was, like, right there that spawns, and he, I, I mean, I guess he probably just fell off or something. I, at least I could assume he probably fell off. He probably saw me coming down on the shortcut elevator and just decided to, like, well, I'm going to do this now. Yeah, I didn't know that was a grab. And so I get munched. Honestly, for a second, I thought I was going to die, but then I didn't, and I was like, oh, okay. I mean, not like it would have impeded me much if I had died there. I mean, it's fairly easy to get back down. I'm just coming back to uh, rescue our old, fr uh, well, new friend, Big Hat Logan, because we don't want him to be stuck down here for all eternity. Something fun and interesting about him, he is one of the few sorcerers that actually seeks to um, expand the knowledge of flame and, uh, not flame, what the hell, not pyromancies, sorceries, because, and uh, many of the sorceries that actually exist were invented by him, at least back in his heyday. Now, as of right now, he's been stuck in here for quite some time. I can only assume he was trying to le reach the capital and was utterly failing at it.
I mean, yeah. Here, let you open there. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll end up speaking with him when we go back there. That won't be for some time. Not until we have the Lord Vessel, though. I just go over here. I actually start frantically opening all these cages. There's really no reason to, but I thought there might have been an elevator to another area in here. But I just couldn't remember. And I was just trying to see if that was the case. But it turns out none of them are that. So we're just basically watching me... Um, finagle around for a bit with these cages for no damn reason. Yeah, just derping around. Oh, uh, it actually kind of reminds me of another moment in the D&D &D game. Um, so, if any, for again, for you guys that have played 3, you know, you probably know how to get the, um, uh, what, what, what were they called? The, uh, I'm trying to remember their name. They're the ones that basically you can be summoned as a mad spirit. You know, I'll leave it at that. So for anyone who understands what that means, you know what I'm talking about. It's basically the purple summon sign. Uh, like, uh, summons and not the normal ones. And, uh, they... Well, when we got to the actual point where we found that covenant in, like, the D&D game, everyone was looking at the guy that you have to get into the back of it, like the guy that has a cage on his back like the big old undead guy with like the cle like the big sock lever thing and we were all like okay who's going to actually get inside of it and we were all kind of like looking back and forth between each other because this being basically spoke to us and said you should climb inside of the cage and I'll take you to a place so we all drew, ended up having to draw straws because no one wanted, wanted to go with the creepy cage man and it was kind of funny Literally, I think we sat there and argued for like 30 minutes on who was going to go in the damn cage because no one wanted to go in the damn cage. I mean, granted, out of character, most of us knew what was really going on, but in character, you know, we just see creepy old undead, giant old undead saying, get in this cage and I'll bring you to some place, essentially, and we're like, ah, uh, that sounds real, rather sus, I'd rather not. Well, that guy went down fairly easily. And up to our right is the giant. I think I get slapped a few times by him, but I, I, I take care of it. Yeah, now I remember what I was doing. I think I tried to yeet some pyromancies at him and it didn't really work that well. Yeah, no. So the actual way, the best way to fight this guy, and you'll see me do, like, do this in a bit. I just had to relearn him for a second. Um, is you basically have to let him go through his attacks and everything. Um, basically just keep getting close over here, let him go through his attacks. Eventually he'll do one where afterwards he'll have to rest and he'll curl up into this ball. And at that point you just two-hand we your weapon or pull out whatever damaging thing you have. Go up and thwack him a few times and he'll die. Well, you might have to do it once or you might have to do it two or three times depending. And I think I only had to do it twice for me. Yep, yeah, that's the attack, I believe. Yep, see? He goes down like that, and once you do that, you can just kind of well on him for a bit, and then once he starts getting up, back the hell at, back out, because you do not actually want to fight him out here. He is a pain in the ass to fight out here. Yeah, now you just gotta bait him out more. Yep, he's already doing it again. Yeah. Dead. Yeah, fairly straightforward if you know what you're doing. Granted, I have seen many a person come up here and just get wrecked by that guy because they always try to fight him out here. <clears throat> and the thing is, by the way, be careful about using fire up there. Those boulders will explode if you uh, ignite them. So say if you're a uh, pyromancy build and you detonate it up there, you can literally detonate all the boulders and kill yourself. Granted, it can also be used to kill the giant, but proceed with caution if you go about that strategy. Proceed with a lot of caution. You can also see we're actually uh, summoning uh, Tarkus here. 
Gonna have this lad help us with the boss fight. Honestly, the only reason I summoned him was because I came over here, I saw a sign, and I was like, you know what, why not? Yeah, because he ends up doing one more da way, no, way more damage than I thought he would. Granted, he only hit like three times, but each hit was like ridiculously strong. I'm starting to question, they, they really buffed the NPCs in this version compared to the uh, Prepare to Die edition. Because like... The NPCs used to not do shit when it came to damage, but but they had an ass ton of health, and it seems they still have that ass ton of health, but they majorly boosted this damage. Like, this guy's greatsword feels like it's plus 15 or something ridiculous, because it is hitting him, hitting this boss like an absolute, like, truck. Actually, I can't even say truck, more like a semi. If you see me, I'm not doing that much damage. Granted, I can easily do this fight on my own. This fight is not very difficult. All you have to do is just hug his butt the entire fight. And, no, I mean literally, you just gotta be up his butthole the entire fight, because... Even if he, you get to the point where he's in front of you, just run between his legs. He can't deal with you. He literally just cannot deal with you. I think at this point I started pulling out the pyramid. Yeah, I did. Yeah, a lot of people, like, are scared of this boss for some reason. I do not know why. Like, he is not a difficult boss. Like, the most difficult part about him is that he can potentially throw you off the platform, but honestly, if you're doing what I just told you to do and just hugging his butt the entire time, there isn't really anything he can do to you. It's all about positioning. And granted, that's a lot of, a lot of Dark Souls is just positioning, knowing where to be and when to be there. Now... Gonna take this light back to the, um... Well, you're about to see. We're gonna have some friends hoist this up. Hello, friends. Yeah, I know, it looks like we're being attacked. We're not. These guys are just guardians of Anorlando. Kind of like the most fucked up looking angels. Well, I can't say the most fucked up looking. If anyone's ever seen, like, biblically accurate angels from, like, the Bible or some shit, like... Man, you talk about eldritch abominations, that's what you get. It almost feels like something you'd see out of, like, uh, like um, the Cthulhu mythos or some shit. At least that's what it feels like. Anyway, welcome to the City of the Gods. We will continue this next time. So until then, this is McMulligan. I hope you all had a great day, and take care.